everyone and welcome to Walk Away From The Workbook. If you're new here, my name is Nicole Seymour and I am a kindergarten teacher in California. Something else you need to know about me is that in college, I majored in child and adolescent development. The reason I wanted to bring up my background in child and adolescent development is because today we're going to talk about something that is very personal to me. We are going to talk about math and specifically we're going to talk about number sense. What is number sense? Number sense is a conceptual understanding of numbers. The way that numbers can be composed of other numbers or decomposed to make smaller numbers. When I was little, I always felt like I was terrible at math. Part of the issue was that the things that we were learning in school, there wasn't as much focus on making sure that kids understood the concepts of what was being taught in math. Instead, they thought it was just important for kids to memorize things. And I am living proof that that is the wrong way to go. That is not how you teach kids math at all. Borrowing a 10 was lost on me. Yes, I understood how to do that when I was given a problem and I could solve that problem, but I had no idea what I was actually doing when I was doing the math problem. So where did I learn about number sense and why should you listen to anything that I say? Well, I actually went to a training at Stanford University several years ago when I worked in the Bay Area. It was a week long training and it was all about how children develop a concept of numbers. The entire training was based on a book called How Children Learn Number Concepts by Kathy Richardson. The book outlines all of the critical learning phases that children need to go through in order to have a strong number sense. I'm gonna begin with the first in the critical learning phases, counting. Many times parents and teachers think that their child or their students have good number sense because they're able to count to a very high number. When in reality, this is not an indication that the child has number sense, more that they have the ability to memorize a rote counting sequence. Being able to memorize a counting sequence is great in theory, but it means nothing if your child does not understand conceptually what is happening as they are counting. If they don't have a visual representation of one being added to the group every time they count, then it doesn't really mean anything that they can count to 300 or 400. If you give your child a group of objects to count, here are some things for you to consider. Are they counting one item for each number? One, two, three, four. So do they have one to one correspondence? Are they able to keep track of what they counted by separating what they have already counted from what they haven't counted? When they finish counting and you ask, how many did you count? Do they tell you the last number in the quantity or do they start at one and count it all over again? If you ask them to count the same group of objects again and they get a different number, does it bother them? Or are they okay with the fact that they just counted two completely different numbers for the same quantity? If you rearrange the objects, are they able to tell you that it's the same amount they just counted or do they have to count it all over again? If you add one or two to the quantity that they counted, are they able to count on from where they left off or do they have to start at one again? Are they able to write the correct numeral to represent the quantity that they counted? So if they counted 15, are they able to write 15? My guess is you probably didn't realize that there was this much to think about when your child is counting. I know I didn't when I went to the training. I had no idea that there was so much to consider when asking a child to count objects. And these are just some of the questions that you can ask your child when they're counting. I'm going to teach you a game that I play in kindergarten and first grade, and I know teachers probably play it up through second and maybe even third grade too. This game is going to show you a way that you can work with your child on composing or putting together and decomposing or breaking apart numbers. Numbers are not isolated. When I say that, what I mean is when your child sees the number nine, for example, the number nine does not stand alone. The number nine can be comprised of two plus two plus two plus two plus one. It is nine ones. It is three groups of three. And they have all these different ways that that number nine can be broken into smaller quantities. In order for your child to understand this, it is essential that you use objects with them so that they can get that visual representation and that visual understanding of what is happening as they are counting. And also so they can manipulate the objects and move them around to really grasp the concept that they're learning. You're going to need a bowl and some objects to count. In kindergarten, I always start this game with just three objects. And that is because 
three is a number that can be broken down into a few different groups. You could do three and zero, one and two, two and one, and that is a really easy way for your child to start developing number sense and understanding that the number three does not stand alone, it can be composed of other numbers. As you feel that your child is grasping the understanding of number three, you can move up to number four, five. I've gone all the way up to 10 in first grade. Let's get started with this game. The first thing you need to do is ask your child to count the objects that they see. Once they count those objects, tell them to close their eyes. Hide some of the objects under the bowl and leave some of the objects outside the bowl. Have your child open their eyes and tell you how many objects they see now. Then have them tell you how many objects are hiding in the bowl, but don't show them how many are hiding in the bowl. This will encourage your child to either add or subtract to figure out what numbers they need to put together to get the quantity they started with. You can help them by reminding them how many you started with, have them put up that number of fingers. Like I said, we usually only go up to 10, so it's easy, they've got 10 fingers. Then tell them to take away how many they see out of the bowl. They can put down that number of fingers and then they'll be able to count how many are left inside the bowl. Pretty soon, your child will develop such a deep sense of the number that you're using that they will know it automatically and you can move up to the next level. If your child gets stuck on a number, stick with that quantity and keep going until they are able to fluently tell you how that number is composed and decomposed. There are so many different games that we can play with children to help develop their number sense. And I do plan on making future videos that will explain some of those games to you. That way you have some different ways to practice this at home. I also plan on doing another video all about the training I attended at Stanford University that is based on Kathy Richardson's book. And if this was interesting to you, or if you would like to read this book on your own to get an idea of how your child learns number concepts, I'm putting a link in the description box below. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I am happy to answer them. And as always, if you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with a friend who might find it useful. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.